What's up everybody? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. I did it again and I looked at the top screen. Don't do that. Look at the camera. I can't. Okay, you do it. All right. What's up everybody? <laughs> what's up, <laughs> yeah. Immediately. <laughs> what's up everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. What, what are we watching today? Today we're doing Dent. Ah, oh, I looked at the screen again. Damn it. Uh, today we're doing a sick ass movie. It's fucking ridiculous though, but it's dope. What is it? Den of Thieves. 50 Cent. Yeah. <laughs> this movie's cool as shit. If you if you think about it, it's fucking ridiculous. Okay. And it's it, like the cop in it, the main detective played by, uh, what is it, Gerard Butler, is literally the worst cop on the planet. He's fucking horrible. But they make him out to be this like ultimate badass. And then, what's the dude, what's that guy's name? He actually makes a cameo in this, that he's a hell, he he's, works for the DEA and then goes undercover for the Hells Angels and a couple biker gangs. Like in real life? Yeah, Jay Dobbins or whatever. Okay, I don't I know. I think it's Jay Dobbins. And he's in like permanent hiding because his work undercover for the Hells Angels. But he came out for a movie? But he came out for a movie and he like does podcasts and books and All shit. Right. He's going to put a charge on the back of this, uh truck. Shit. Gardena, 30 seconds out. Copy. 30 out! Hustle! Mm -hmm. Hop it! Ready! So they have, this is a question for you as a yeah. Charlie, as a demo guy. So they have a, mm -hmm. um, the transfer vehicle for funds. What is that? The armored vehicles for, uh, cash for banks? Yeah, it's the armored vehicle. So it's an, they have an armored vehicle and they put a camelback, a full-size camelback, and they stick it to the back as a water charge yep. to, to break it open. Tell me what you think about water charges. So my experience with water charges was that they were kind of useless. I don't know if we did it right, but we would we kind of experimented with putting... So, so please break this down for me, but we, we would take uh, IV bags, mm -hmm. yep. and then we would put C4 or the deck cord, deck cord on the back of it, and then we tried it on the front of it. Mm -hmm. So the idea being that the back of it would push the water into the door, and then the front of it would kind of house and and force the explosion more into the door. Right. And what what I found in our training was that the the best use scenario for a water charge was a metal door mm -hmm. because the metal the water would like collapse the door in yep. and pull it away from the hinges. Yeah. So, so the idea between a water charge, especially what you're talking about with the deck cord, right? So deck cord is a very fast or sharp explosive. Um, so you have two types of explosives. Generally you have a, a pushing explosive or a, a cutting, right? So deck cord, C4, those are the high RE factor, relative explosive factor explosives. So they're made for like cutting. So you can cut steel. That's why if you take deck cord and wrap it around a door or something like that, you can cut the steel. So the idea with the water on top of that is now that, so you, you put the water behind it, you have the deck cord on the inside and believe it or not, you know, that water is going to cause resistance. And so the explosive shock wave is going to go to the path of least resistance, mm. right? So by having a sandwich between the water, now it's going to direction or direct it the opposite direction. Um, another way I've seen is between two bags of IV, right? And then you're oh, sandwich the charge, sandwiching it or kind of what you were talking about, putting on the outside and then having the, the IV bag there, because what that's going to do is it's going to slow down the explosive. So it's going to slow down the shockwave. So then what happens is you go from a cutting charge that will just cut a hole or a straight line straight through that metal door. Now you're getting all the weight of the water and it's essentially turning it into a pushing charge, which is why you'll see that metal door then kind of bend in, okay. blow off the hinges. So there's, there's a couple ways to do it. But yeah, water charges, that's a, a legitimate technique. And it's cool to see in a movie like this that they use that. But the thing I don't like in this is they put it on there. And as soon as they pop it, the door opens back outwards, right? That door would have been folded in, not... Yeah, because it's, it's being not pushed just gonna, by that water. Right, exactly. It's not going to magically grab it and pull it the opposite direction like it did yeah. in here. So. so these guys, there's a couple of these guys that are MARSOC. And that they have the MARSOC tattoo on their shoulder. So the Marine Special Operations Command. Yeah, so they're Marines and they have a couple of Special Operations guys. And I think the tactics... Of the bad guys are really good. It's the good guys that are fucking atrocious. <laughs> okay. Um, but 
in this scene, it's really good. They have some really good tactics. Mm -hmm. I just thought the water charge was interesting because I don't know specifically why you would want to use the water charge in this scenario. Like, if you have those doors, why would you feel that you want a pushing charge to push open that that door? If you understand the vehicle... What's, in, what's inside of the vehicle? Is it a person? No, money. Well, I don't know. Maybe... Which, in this case, I think the truck was empty. Ended up being empty or something like that. There was something about the hall being empty. So the idea, I think, between that is you don't want to harm whatever's on the uh, other side of the okay, door. Okay, okay, okay. That makes so sense. So you want to try to save it. Um, but it's not a person. So you would say if if it's a person inside and you want to protect them, the war charge is the best way to go. Yeah, and that'll, you know, it'll knock the door in, which will, by, you know, by bending it, it'll pull it off of whatever mechanism is locking it and likely the hinges as well. Which is crazy because I shit you not, we did not get briefed this at all. We just start throwing water charges on doors to see what would happen. And they almost <laughs> always were shitty. Mm -hmm. It almost always sucked unless it was a metal door with the charge on the outside. Yeah. Because then the water pushed in and, like I said, it folded it like it tacoed the door enough to where it pulled it away from the hinges. So you guys learned by trial and error, basically. Yeah. So. so we didn't know what we were doing, but we were just like, we had a Charlie, so we knew like minimum safe distances and all that stuff but we're experimenting yeah basically we're experimenting with water charges with the iv bags and that's all we could finally get a successful water charge with is to talk of the door but it made me walk away with the idea that water charges are kind of meh yeah you know and so like i didn't know when i would be like this is a perfect scenario for a water charge yeah so it all it's called tamponing is when you put something on the outside of the charge to direct the explosive shock wave so that's all that's the concept that it uses okay because it, it is effective though alternatively you would have identified the hinges mm -hmm. and then run like a strip charge or a folding strip charge which is just a deck cord in a folding sticks yep. Lock that onto the hinges and pop the right. hinges. And that's why it's important to know what you're going to defeat, right? So mm -hmm. you said you did it on all these different materials and it only worked on the metal doors, right? Mm -hmm. And that makes sense because if you put it on like a wooden door or something like that, it's probably just going to blow it to pieces mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. And then you're going to have more issues on the inside if there is somebody inside because now you got splinters going everywhere and well, stuff like that. Yeah, sometimes you would fucking blow half the top half the door down. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, that doesn't do any fucking So good. now you've still got the other half of the door to defeat. Yeah, so now we're ripping the bottom half of the door. We're having to pull it apart because all it did was blow like a top right corner of the door down. Yep. And that could be the worst case scenario. If you start to put charges on, you don't pick the right charge. You blow half the door. You just created more of an inconvenience because now they know you're there. Yep. Your element surprise is gone and you're dealing with the same fucking obstacle. You can't fit through that door. So you still have to defeat the rest of the door. That's where operationally your intel will come in and you'll know what type of door you're coming up against. If not, you'll ideally have multiple types of charges yep. ready to go. So then you can kind of think on the fly. That's what SWAT does a good job at. SWAT, when they have a, a, a target location, they'll go by in civilian vehicles and take pictures of the entry points. So that way they know going mm -hmm. in. It's like, your target's there. Your target lives there. They're not going anywhere. Like, that's where they operate. So it's not like, it's, it's not a time-sensitive target. So TST, um, where, you know, when we get a TST, we do the best with whatever intel we have and we just mm -hmm. run with it. But SWAT... Sometimes they have time sensitive targets for sure. For sure, they have a lot of them. But a lot of times they have the opportunity to intel and case the location. Yeah. And then they can take pictures and determine like, hey, it's a metal door, inward opening, yep. or That's outward open, outward opening. All that stuff is important for which charge that you pick. I just think charges are fucking fascinating. They I are. love building charges. You can do so much with them because like you can go anywhere from like blowing an entire wall down. To doing like a precision, like just popping a lock off a door yeah. if you want to. And it all, like that's why, you know, it's it's awesome. It was so much fun, like in the Charlie course, like learning how to do all these different things. And Dude, so actually badass. experimenting, whenever you actually got to experiment, like you Ooh, did with so multiple fun. types yeah, of yeah. doors. And you're like, well, let's see what happens with this, you know, yeah. like let's do this one. That was, that was a lot of fun. Demo ranges were always fun. And then you start to get into the more expensive stuff, uh, the data sheets. Mm -hmm. And that data sheet's a thin layer of material and you start stacking the explosive compound on itself to make, you know, higher explosives. So I think, what did they, how did they uh, call it the data sheet? It was like something two, something four. 
I don't remember. We only use data sheets in the Charlie course. I never yeah, so use them after. The only reason we got data sheet was because a Criff guy came and brought the data sheet that he okay. made. Because data sheets was like the expensive tier one stuff. So the Criff guy had it. But then they would, with the data sheet, and it's it's thin sheets. So the, the what makes data sheet better to use is you could create more with it. You could cut it out little pieces. And so they would do ladder charges. They would do you know, different shaped folding charges. Mm -hmm. You're literally like a kid playing with toys with charges. And you're like, this explosive is perfect for this kind of wall. Yeah. And then dude, one time we had, um, we had an Afghan compound replicated in on Fort Bragg. I'm sorry, on Fort Carson. So we could go practice our charges in our breaches. That's awesome. And so, but this will happen. So we're dry, we had, we coordinated everything. We did all the hard work to get this wall built out in the middle of nowhere in the training part of Fort Carson. We're driving out as a team to go practice our breaches on this compound because we had to wait for it to dry, the mud hut. They did an exact replica of Afghanistan mud hut. On our way out, the fucking Criff is driving out. And we're like, what the fuck? Like, this is a way out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> the fuck is the Criff doing here? And they're like, hey, guys. And we're like, oh, hey, what's up, bros? You know, like the Criff, you know, cool guys. What's up? They fucking leveled our wall. <laughs> they shot everything the fuck they had at that wall that we had specifically built oh, to assholes. train on. They just fucking leveled it. I was like, you pieces of shit. All right, so what's the Criff? Combat Reaction it. Force. So the Criff no longer exists in 10th Group. We used to have two Criffs. Uh, both were 10th group. Well, actually, we had multiple Chris because mm -hmm. 7th group had one. Maybe each group had a mm -hmm. Chris. So come, uh, quick reaction. Well, no. It used to be the, the SIF. The SIF was... Commander's in Extremist Force. I yeah, think. whatever the fuck they call themselves. The whole idea was that you change the name every couple years because once people know what they are, they're not elite. They're not secretive. So we had this like elite unit. And these five fucking guys were good. They're really good at clearing buildings and doing CQB because that's all they would just, do all day. It's just a direct action arm. Yeah. Just an entire was, company of direct action guys. Yeah, so it was CAG. It was like CAG for us. CAG light, maybe. Yeah, so it was CAG light. So what makes them CAG light is the fact that they didn't get actual operations. So when I came to group, I was supposed to go to straight to the CRIF. And I was like, yeah. And I opened my mouth and I told the Sergeant Major I was going to go to the CRIF. And I was like, fuck <laughs> you are. So anyway, I got kicked out. But because... I, they don't want new guys. They want to, but anyway, they're going away. The The problem is they didn't get any missions to justify their existence. And that was the issue. Yeah. So we called them on, on, we call them paper target killers. We were like, are oh, you guys are paper killers? You know, cause like all you do is kill paper targets. Their budget was too high. Their utilization was too low. Yeah. So they ended up a lot of the crypt. Once we started getting in war in 10th group and we started getting in combat, a lot of the crypt were trying to jump ship and come to regular regular uh, SF units. Uh, we co we're called like the Vanilla Soft or yeah. whatever, White Soft, because they were the black side, we're the white side. It's some bullshit. But we were getting combat, and they weren't. So now they're like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> like, <laughs> so they started to jump ship and try to come over to uh, to the you know regular SF units so that way they can get deployed and actually shoot at a person instead of a paper. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Abel, don't cut any of that out. That's all good shit. <laughs> this has been the longest <laughs> yeah. one time stamp ever. Th that's probably the most info we'll get. In this all right, guys, thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm not it's, sure. It's definitely for evidence. He put it in the driver's side so that way if there's any fingerprints, if there's any hair follicles, this fluid, because the, the idea makes sense, right? Like yeah. your, your hair follicles are going to fall out whether you're covered in a mask or not. Maybe you lie know? or something? So whatever that fluid is needs to render all DNA useless. Right. But it looks like windshield wiper fluid. And I, I'm sure a Google search would figure that fucking thing out. If, that's not what we're here for. But I ain't fucking Google <laughs> shit, all right? That, that's, that's we're going to drink and talk shit about yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to drink and talk shit. I would think that bleach would be the way to go, and I would think that too. I would want two because you got to understand that when you blow something, you're only getting the dispersion from one angle. Yeah. So then all the things anything from... Anything behind the seat. Anything behind the seat is going to be completely exposed. And you got a dead space in there. Right. So if a hair falls out and falls behind the seat, like, what are you going to do? So I would think you would want a charge in the front seat and a charge in the back seat with bleach or some type of chemical that's going to, uh, you know, clear that. Why not just put something bigger just to destroy the car? Or, yeah, or you could just light it on fire. Yeah. Blow the car. Whoever this is, this is a former Charlie. He just likes blowing shit. Yeah. Up. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then to use the Camelback for the water charge, I thought was pretty yeah. cool. That was a good touch. What's up, guys? Did you know that the mentor program is now live? That's right. We're live. Go sign up now at thefngacademy.com. Click the mentorship program. We have three tiers. Tier three, if you just want to support the channel or if you just want the exclusive content, it's $25 a month. Uh, we're doing weekly video drops on there and it's the best way to help support us so we can keep doing what we're doing. Tier two is coaching in group sessions and tier one is one-on-one -on -one coaching with a green beret. Thank you so much and we look forward to helping you guys achieve your goals. Also, this video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you want to be SF, you need to be in shape. Go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK and he'll hook you up. From a law enforcement perspective, that would not go down like that. You're Why not gonna, is that? You're not going to have fucking three cops just getting in a gunfight, banging it out with these dudes <laughs> for like any longer than literally 30 seconds to a minute. The whole city is going to fucking swarm on this gunfight. Right. There's not going to be an open road, an open stretch of highway. There's going to be helicopters in the air. <laughs> think about this. Like, you think Denver, so I was a cop in Denver. Denver is not the only assets that can come down on your ass. You have surrounding cities mm -hmm. that all have their own assets. Everyone has their own assets as a, a city. So when something this big happens where cops are in a fucking shootout with rifles and multiple people who are trying to rob an uh, a armed vehicle, everyone's coming. So jurisdiction doesn't jurisdiction matter? Jurisdiction is out the fucking window. Hmm. If you have assets, you're sending the assets. Oh, cool. So that means that within minutes of this shootout, there would have been 100 police officers. There would have been fucking uh, multiple birds in the air. There would, The ghetto bird would have been fucking spotlighting them, you know, from a safe distance, you know, to follow them. It would, there's no way they would have <laughs> made it out of there. They would have never left this situation. We got four dead, six on the way to the hospital, but they'll be all right. Fuck. Ambushed them as they were coming to get breakfast. Surrounded the truck. This poor fool right here was trying to do what he gets paid to do. AP rounds blasted through the windshield, took him out. I took the truck. Gardena police lost him under Hawthorne Municipal. Knew the route. Picked it because it was next to Municipal Airport. Knew the restricted airspace meant no ghetto bird air support. Dealing with a different animal here, boys. Restricted <laughs> airspace meant no ghetto bird. What? Do you think? Do they have to abide by that? Fuck no, dude. You got fucking. You got true. You got officers in contact in a gunfight. You think that there's gonna be like, sorry guys, like, I'd love to come support you, but it's restricted airspace. Maybe maybe it is dependent on why it's restricted. No. 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 If, like if you got the president in town or... I don't, I don't know. give a fuck. If, so here's the thing. There's always contingencies for that. So let's say the president's in town and it's restricted airspace 
and then their gunfight breaks out. Well, you're going to fly over. And when they say, hey, you can't fly over, there's restricted airspace, there's a gunfight. They're going to say, okay, roger that. <laughs> then they're going to communicate to the... <laughs> you have an exception. You have an exception, but then they're going to move the president. They're going to be like, sir, it's time to go. There's a gunfight in here. <laughs> right, <and yeah. laughs> we have to get the fuck out of here. So, like, it was this was an afterthought because they're like, why wouldn't there be a helicopter yeah. to follow them out? And they'd be like, we'll just say, we'll have Gerard Butler say in his weird fucking side mouth that it's restricted yeah, access. Restricted airspace. Restricted airspace. don't get bird. I don't get a bird. <laughs> Why he's eating a donut off the ground? Because he's fucking cool. Ziggy's half brown. Let's pay him a visit. Check his videos. Wolfgang, talk to me. Donnie, I'm tapped out. Uh -huh. No problem. Put it on my tab, all right? Of course, man. I got Thank it. Thank you. I'm all right. So, speaking of cops that take it too far, so two things. So that's Jay Dobbins, that guy that just. I don't know if Jay Dobbins is his actual name. No, I'm not seeing. So Jay Anthony Jaybird Dobbins is a retired special agent. Special agent and veteran undercover operative with the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Farms. So he's a DEA agent. He's a New York Times bestselling author and public speaker and a high school football coach, <laughs> apparently. So Jay Dobbins is all about he, the his whole story is that he went undercover and would like tear up um, outlaw gangs. So I'm pretty sure he was with, gangs. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure he's with the Angels and they had stint with. Uh, he had a couple, so maybe so the Mongols. Anarchy. He might have been in with the Mongols. But basically, he fucked his own life up because he went in on these. I would never do that. I would never, never do that. I would never agree to go snitch on outlaws. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. I'm not doing it. Fuck that noise. I'm not snitching on outlaws. Um, there's no fucking way. Because you're going to look over your shoulder for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's like you go, you go intermingle with them. But then here's the problem. And I think that they have Jay in here for a reason. I think it's because they're trying to correlate him with the main detective of going too far. Mm -hmm. And people do go too far. And Jay is like the real world example. In of, too deep. Kind yeah, of. is the in too deep is you like that. We all want to be, we all have that part of us that want to be outlaws. Yeah. We want to say, fuck it. Fuck the rules. I want to do what I want to do. I want to, you know, you know what I'm saying. And that was his way of being part of that community. Right. Like, in a way, you know. Yeah. So you're you're trying to have your be half in, half out. Yeah. You're trying to be law enforcement and then get into that community and snitch. But really, you're fucking blowing coke off strippers' asses. Yeah. He's enjoying every minute he's, of he's it. He's loving it. At the end of the day, these fucking, this Jay guy, he loves that shit. He loved it. And if I'll tell him right to his face, you fucking loved it and you know it. And that's what they're trying to represent in this is like... These people, these detectives, I've seen like our narcotics guys and they weren't doing anything bad, but you could tell that they, you know, they start to live in that gray area. Yeah. They get the beers, they start doing some gray area shit and they love it. I would love it. If you yeah. put me in that position, I would start doing some shady shit and I would love it because but, I've been a shady human being. Like I grew up in the fucking, in some pretty shitty environments yeah. and we did some shady shit. I mean, that's like for us. Like, that's why people like being Green Berets. Because you don't have to... You can kind of bend a few of the rules. Yeah. Like, as far as, like, the strict army policies and rules, you get to kind of bend a little bit You get bit to of bend that, a you know? little bit. Hands it in your pockets. It feels good. You got, you're yeah. drinking beer at work. Your hair's a little long. Your hair's you know? long. You, you know, you on deployment, you got beards. You're killing motherfucker. Yeah. Like, shit's cool. So, that's what... We like to be... In that environment without fully being in that environment. Because yeah. nobody wants to fully be an outlaw. Because then you're, you're, you don't have a great job. You're not making great money. Like, I, I'm reading right now um, the Hells Angels book. Uh, fuck, what's that? Damn, the guy that did Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah, so I'm reading Hunter S. Thompson. I'm about finished with his book on the Hells Angels. And he's like... You know, even though it was back in the day, it's like you get that out of your You're system. Modern day pirate. Modern day pirate, but at the same time, like you, to be an outlaw means to be outside the system, which means you don't get the benefits of being in the system. Yeah. Which is money and finances and financial freedom and things like that. So they have to resort to, you know, dealing drugs or dealing weapons or or just not having money and you know doing odds and ends jobs to kind of 
fund this lifestyle of mm-hmm. being on the road. So there's definitely people, I guess what I'm saying is that Jay Dobbins is the perfect representation of a person who got in too deep, loved the fuck out of it, and then had to get pulled out and try to make a new career out of books and podcasts and all yeah. this other stuff. Because for the rest of his life, if a Hell's Angel or anyone, you know, Mongols or whoever he infiltrated, he knows that if they catch him, you're done. You're done. They're going to fucking done, son. kill him. And they, like they'll kill his family, they'll kill him. So to think that he's not in danger for the rest of his life is fucking nonsense. Yeah. He's in hiding for the rest of his life. Was it worth it? <sighs> Fuck no. Fuck no. Those guys are on, moved on with their lives, fucking replaced, and you're still looking over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. I would never snitch on, not like, no. I ain't living that life. Bye-bye. Dude, hey. what the fuck? Oh, damn. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? Why would you do that? You're a cop. <laughs> Why would you tase him in the throat and then punch him and knock him out? Why is, it, is, he, is he a cop too? No, he's, okay. a, he's one of the crew members that they're trying to arrest. <laughs> and so instead of just being like, hey, man, we need to talk to you, police officer, come with, you're coming with me. <laughs> and him being like, oh, man, fuck. He tases him in the fucking throat and then punches him in the face. Like, why would you do that? Why would you beat his ass? This is excessive force, maybe. I don't know. It's fucking ridiculous. Tase him in the throat. Look, he got his point across. Gosh, I, damn. I need to talk. I need to talk. <laughs> like, all you had to do was be like, hey, man, fucking police. Get out of the car. And he'd be like, oh, what? Hands behind your back. You're coming with us. And then take him. Instead, this guy went night-night and got delivered somewhere else. Dude, time traveled, essentially. Fucking went ham on him. That's Ice Cube's son. Where? Some pancakes. Him, isn't it? Three of them. Oh, I don't know. Is it? Where you from? Hawthorne. Kind of looks like him. So you can drive, huh? Oh, I can drive. Yeah. Yo, didn't they not? Hell just, yeah. <laughs> Bro, that's me right Bro, there. Bro, did they just not throw this Fast and the Furious whoa, reference? Whoa. He just said a one liner and then Ooh, you might want to put your seatbelt on. And then fucking drifted. Look, I would have in that car. I would have chose a different car, but that's fine. You yeah, know, the Mustang's got, whack, but they probably had the highest pay. Right? Yeah, exactly. But you know, he still whipped it. That was good. I appreciate the the skill. Yeah, I, I figured like you would appreciate that. That's like your part of the movie. Hell yeah. What's up, Mr. Lavo? Uh-huh. Nice to meet you. Yeah, let me have it for a second. <laughs> So this is what's up. For the past 16 years, my daughter's safety and protection has been my responsibility and my responsibility only. Now for the first time in her life, I see I gotta hand you that responsibility. Yo, tell me oh, we can do that to our kids. Bro, bro, hell yes, that is awesome. You walk in, it's just a gang of dudes. You got some Samoan dude speaking another language. So. <laughs> the kid's gonna, that kid's gonna come in and I'll be like, oh, what's up, bro? <laughs> Just got done cleaning the guns. Which one? <laughs> I'm not sure which one you like more, but uh, <laughs> take your pick. You are more of a black guy <laughs> or a sick like, guy? You like one of these? I like one this one. This one shoots real nice. <laughs> this one never misses. That was awesome. I love how it's like uh, he's just gonna talk to him. He's just, he's just gonna, gonna talk to him. Yeah, and dad and 15 of his closest friends are in the garage. Like, she didn't know that. Uh, bro, They're all in there doing push-ups beforehand, getting a nice little <laughs> pump and a nice little sweat going. Bro, I love that scene. 50 Cent's so fucking dope in it. He just, like, settle, fucking let him have it, dude. That shit was <laughs> sick, dude. Get all the homies in the garage and be like, yep. listen, back by 11.30? And that motherfucker better said, back by 11. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. better. Oh man, I love that scene. That's my one of my favorite scenes of any movie. Of all it's time. like that one in like the 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 Bad Boys, when uh, Will Smith's in the background from Martin Lawrence opens the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Suspects arriving on location. We got nothing for the DA. They haven't committed a crime yet. Clear the bank. We take them down. Stand by. Roger that. What the epic fuck? This is the part that bothers me about this movie. We have the suspects on scene. You have enough intelligence to know that they're going to rob a bank. And you're saying that the, you don't have enough of the DA. You have to wait for them to clear the bank to get charges. That's fucking ridiculous. It's like shitty rules of engagement. It's like going up and being like, that's like somebody walking up and be like, I'm going to shoot that guy over there. When I get there, I have a gun. I have everything <laughs> I need to do it. I have bullets in it. Here's bullets. You know that I've shot people before. You can't before. stop me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go shoot that guy. And the cop's like, well, you haven't done anything yet. So As soon as you shoot him, you're in trouble, yeah, mister. When you shoot that guy, <laughs> I'm going to be real pissed. And I'm going to come and arrest you. There ain't like, nowhere in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what's happening here. That's literally what they're saying. That's what they want you as the audience to believe. Is that this guy has a gun. And there's another guy over there. And he tells you as the cop, I'm going to shoot that motherfucker. And you're like, okay, but don't. And you're like, I'm going <laughs> to. And he's like, but don't. And you're like, okay. And then you tell your buddies he hasn't committed a crime yet. That's the equivalent of what's happening uh, right now. So in the police department, did you guys have arms rooms? Yeah. They weren't just like in your desk? Like no. at the beginning of the scene? No. That, your arms room is not in your office. <laughs> and you don't... Why he has a scar... I have no idea. <laughs> did you say, did any police SWAT anybody have scars? No, no one has scars. Why would you want a scar? Why would you no, need that? Ever. No, ever. Like, no. Why? Why would you just, why would a department buy like fucking 50 M4s and then just be like, scar. We need a scar. Well, this guy now <laughs> this needs guy. special ammunition. <laughs> yeah. But we're willing to buy a scar, but definitely we can't afford an optic no, for it no 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 optic that's way over budget it's fine you got the little flip up sights yeah so we'll just send them into with fucking iron sights <laughs> like there's fucking street cops in denver with that almost all of them have optics on their pistols <laughs> and this motherfucker can't put an optic on his scar like why would okay, you buddy, save a little bit of money buy it on your own dime bro, buy an m4 for cheaper and see so if you're that broke and then your department could afford to put an optic on it so you could actually hit what you're shooting at <laughs> you piece of shit they're walking towards the place Whoa. they've got masks on they're fully kitted up look at these motherfuckers They're, they're going to make a lawful deposit. This Jeez. is where this movie just gets me, dude. Fucking, they let armed, masked, kitted out fucking criminals that they know rob banks. And had they know have killed officers before. They're murderers. You have murder suspects in your grasp. And you say that they haven't committed a crime? Surely one of these guys is a convicted felon already. So that's a crime in itself. All of them are. They they know that they've they've murdered the cops. They yeah, killed were they cops. They're convicted of it. They're suspected of. They're well, homicide well, suspects. Maybe, maybe they're not. They're not convicted. I mean, they're not. Yeah. Breaking. So you, you could definitely mask up, kid up, and walk into a bank with firearms. That's perfectly legal. I'm, no. Hello, I'm here to make a lawful deposit <laughs> <laughs> with my four buddies <laughs> and their rifles. And then if that wasn't enough, that they were walking in fully armed and kitted out to the gills they shot fucking rounds off inside that should have been enough like that that's enough that's Dude, more than enough no, no no just understand from a law enforcement perspective they had enough immediately <laughs> they could have at least detained them and questioned them right <laughs> at the like, very least hey they, they had what a, are you doing they had enough immediately you don't have to commit a crime you first of all it is illegal to take a firearm into a bank all banks are no, you can't carry firearms into a bank, period, because, I don't know, people like to rob banks with firearms. So it's a no gun <laughs> zone anyway. So you're already violating, you're already breaking the law. And then second, you these are known suspects that already are wanted. <laughs> Every one of them has a warrant out for their arrest if you know who they are because you, you know they've robbed banks for you know which bank they're going to rob. You have everything you need to arrest these You're guys. You're already there. You're already done. The DA has everything. It's done. They go in, You let them go inside the bank. You're 
they're shooting rounds off at cameras. But if those rounds were people, every one of those dead bodies would be on yep. those officers. They're culpable at that point. They fucking allowed that crime to happen. They had multiple opportunities to stop it. We gotta move. We gotta oh, move. Hey! Is he off his meds? Tell him to get the fuck back here! You shut the fuck up. Oh, fuck <laughs> you. We better go back him up. Next heading to the front, we're on the move. Here we go. Fuck. Is he serious? <laughs> This guy would have been fired, uh, like, so many times. Is this is the most incompetent police officer on the fucking planet. <laughs> now that you have the FBI there, first of all, you don't have jurisdiction over the FBI. The FBI shows up, you're not going to tell them to go fuck off. I promise you that. There's a hierarchy in the police department. It's worse than the military. <laughs> That's like telling your sergeant major to go suck a dick. Like, Ooh, you're not, not going to end well. It's not going <laughs> to end well. Because guess what? The FBI is more connected than local law enforcement. And if you're in a political environment like that, who has more political pull, local law enforcement or the FBI? The fucking FBI. That guy's going to be able to call people that could ruin your fucking life. And then he'll call people that will then put pressure on your chief, who is then going to feel embarrassed and put pressure on you. And the shit rolls downhill yep. until you are fucking fired. So no, you're not telling an FBI agent to go fuck himself. That shit will end badly for local law enforcement. Tenth of all of this guy's stupid fucking decisions is that now he's going to... First of all, he let this crime happen. <laughs> and now that he's allowed this crime to take place, now he's going to 12 strong that shit, the captain from 12 strong, and run into the doors <laughs> by himself and make everybody chase him. With a crowbar and a pistol. With a crowbar. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, this is the... Every... Oh, this guy's so fucking stupid. Yeah, but you know what? He's probably really hungover right now. Yeah. <laughs> He was like, you know what? If it ends, it ends. <laughs> He's just a piece of shit. <laughs> okay, we got him pinched in. We got to move before it opens up. Cuff him up. We advise suspects wearing body armor. No center mass shots, limb and head shots only. Copy that. We're on right here. He says limb and head limb shots only. Limb and head shots only. With this fucking lip that doesn't move. Like fucking Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I promise you that you're giving yourself way too much credit. <laughs> you are not going to be able to fucking hit. You don't even have an optic on your fucking rifle. <laughs> and you're going to talk about limb and head limb shots and head only. Shots only. Like, no, my guy, you fat Gerard Just Butler. Shoot him in the dick and <laughs> like, fucking put him down. <laughs> your best bet is to fucking hit the human body. Yeah. Like, if Just you, hit something. If you hit something, you should be proud of yourself because I promise you, you're not going to be hitting fucking <laughs> limbs and heads only with your untrained ass on how to shoot for a rifle. Just so people understand, when detect detectives are not snapshots, like... I don't care how many tattoos you get on your neck. Like we had officers in Denver PD that were detectives that were completely covered in tattoos. Fucking fingers, neck, hmm. undercover. They looked fucking perfect for the job. They're not SWAT. They don't train weapons every day. They don't know how to shoot really well. They're not runners and gunners. Their job is to gain intelligence, to find sources, to find snitches, to build cases. And then when things like this happen where you need guns... You call SWAT. So I don't People care. train on that. Right. You call the one unit you have that trains how to shoot, move, and communicate. You Every police department only has a... every has, They all have an element of shooters. They're not all shooters. Yeah. Cops are some of the worst shooters because they're so busy doing other calls. They don't have time to, to stay up on shooting and moving together. Mm -hmm. On top of that, they can't do that because... Let's go to. Let's say we go to a call. I can go to a call that's on the edge of our limits, and I'm with other jurisdictions. So you don't get that cohesive team. Never cohesive. Oh, You're okay. all, like like rarely ever do you get yeah. to go with one of your boys that you've trained with and shot with, and then that guy's only shooting your shoot when you have to like do your shooting qualifications. It's a yearly minimum, so you're going when you can. So think, you're not even training as a team. I think that's important, too, because a lot of people will probably think, like, well, if you're trained, then you should be fine, right? But I remember, like, specifically going through, like, CQB with my team, mm -hmm. and everything was, like, fire, and everybody's on the same thing. 
as soon as you jump in a stack with another team, it's a completely different element. Yep. Like everybody's got it, little small nuances will be different. Yep. It just throws everything off. And that's police officers. Is they're constantly changing the team because you yeah, never know wild. who's showing up to that call. You're always never changing about people, that. so they can't tra- they can't train together like this. But even the the these detectives, their job is to build cases, not to fucking hunt down bad guys yeah. and get in gunfights in the streets. Yeah, that's SWAT. And second, a police officer's primary job is the preservation of life. It's always the preservation of life. They would rather let that guy go. Then get in a gunfight and kill civilians. Yep. Oh, shit. What? Getting out of the car. Even the bad guy's like, he's got a fucking moron. See, go down the right. Gus, right show center with me. Push. Stay in the left. Don't come in. Ask me to soft. Let's go. Everybody behind him is like, what the fuck? They're just going to tell people to stay down? Like, you think that's going to protect? Like, there's like fucking 40 cars between you and them. And you're just going to get in a gunfight with all these people stuck in traffic. Yeah. And as civilians, I imagine nobody's going to stay down. They're no. all going to be trying to peek and see what's going like, on. What's up? What's Got going? their phone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Civilians, you guys are the fucking worst. <laughs> you're the fucking worst, dude. Every time you see lights and signs, what is it? What is yeah, it? Yeah. Officer, what is it? Officer, what is it? Bro, we've been on fucking had dangerous spot suspects with guns, and I'm pulling security, like waiting for this dude to pop out so we could fucking kill him because he's taking hostages and running. And I have people like, Officer, what are you doing? What is it? What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? And part of me is like, when I was a, a rookie, I'm thinking Afghanistan. I'm like, I'm I'm back in it. You know, this is good. This is good. I'm going to watch my sector. I'm not having flashbacks. Like, I'm feeling good. I'm, yeah. I'm in my zone. And I got a civilian going, sir, what are you doing? Officer, tell me what you're doing. What are you doing here? And I want to look at them like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I just want to look at them like, like kick them. Get away. Fuck off. What? None of your fucking business. If you see cops with guns pointed at windows... Maybe you should go the other direction. <laughs> officer, do you have probable cause? Excuse me, officer, what are Is you doing? Is he black? What are you doing, sir? <laughs> what are you doing, officer? And they'll pull their phone out and put it in your face. What are you doing, officer? Like, bitch. Bitch, you want to die? Fuck. People are so stupid, man. They're stupid and nosy. So this is the dumbest gunfight I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, why would you? Why wouldn't you just run away? The bad guys? Yeah. Instead of sitting there and engaging. They sit there and they run two cars. Shoot! 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 Yeah. Run two cars. Shoot! 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 Hey, dumbass! Just run. Just Create keep space. running. Fucking run! Run away. That's what bad guys do. Went to police. They run away. And they, most of the time, they get away with it. Well, you know, if you stay there and fight, likely there's going to be more and more police that come. Yeah, the longer you stay there, the worse your situation gets. So just run. But these fucking assholes, every two minutes, turn around and start trying to have a gunfight. They watch some Navy SEAL movies. Yeah, they watch too many fucking movies, and now they're stuck in this, like, ridiculous gunfight. All right, so let's end this fucking crazy. (laughs) I love this movie. I love this movie until I started trying to break it down for Beers Breakdowns. And thanks, guys. You ruined fucking Den of Thieves for me because it's the stupidest movie ever. I thought it was a good movie. It's a great Uh, movie. It was was action-packed. I enjoyed that. It's got 50 Cent. I love 50 in it. I think he's one of the best characters in it. He doesn't overact. He's just like that fucking... He's real, man. He's real. He's from the street. He's been shot. He's probably like, you guys are fucking stupid for these tactics. Like, I've been shot. Don't do that. He got (laughs) shot in the face, bro. He got shot nine times. 50's been in it. Nine fucking times. That dude's gangster as fuck. I love 50. So anyway, these guys, it's just ridiculous. Because when you break down the scenes, really Gerard Butler's character is the worst cop on the planet. That's what this comes down to. So the final end tally is Gerard Butler does not get the bad guys. He mm. does not get the money that was stolen. Mm. His Some of his guys get killed. He's probably going to get fired because he's a cunt. And he's got a divorce. So he just lost so on he all lost fronts. Everything. So Gerard Butler sucks. 
all for the fact that he gets to walk around and be the cool guy. Yeah. And I'm the tough guy. I'm the guy that doesn't care. I'll eat donuts off the ground. Blah, blah, blah. No. Nobody, yeah. look, that may be cool when you're like 21. Right. But that's not cool when you're 53 like this guy is in yeah. this movie. Like. You're a jackass. You know what's cool? <laughs> Going home to your wife and right. kids because that's awesome. And then going to work and doing a good, good job. Right. And then going home to your wife and kids and loving them and ha- and being loved. Instead of showing up hungover every day. Bro, you're Banging old strippers. as fuck. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. Like, you're at the strip club because your, your fucking wife hates you and you're cheating on your wife because you want to play gangster. You're a fucking phony. You know, you're still a cop. Be a cop, dude. Be a good cop. There's nothing cool about choosing to be a cop and then blurring the lines into criminal behavior. I think 50 Cent had a song about that. It was called Wankster. <laughs> that's true wanna be gay so bro he did 50 Cent had some good shit I like he when did, he, he came out and he went after Ja Rule for being a bitch yo 50 Cent essentially ruined Ja Rule's yeah. career cause like, Ja Rule just killed it Ja Rule was in this gangster rap thing and yep. he was telling everybody he was tough he's a gangster he's all, all hard ass and then 50 came up and saw him, and Ja hid like a little bitch yeah. in the club, and he was like, ah, oh, this he's, guy's a punk. He's like, look, Ja ain't no gangsta. Yes, but he's ja, a gangsta. He was at the top of his career. So yeah. 50 saw an opportunity. He talks about this in his memoir. He's like, I saw an opportunity. I'm going to go show everyone that he's a pussy, he's a bitch, and then I'm going to use that to fucking create a beef with someone that's way higher than me and elevate my status. It and that's exactly what he did. It worked. Another thing that 50 talks about is that Oprah hated on him because he was like she didn't like him for whatever reason i don't know if he was because he was using the n-word or something like that whatever so oprah hated on him so he was like well oprah is making people successful so to get on oprah is like getting on joe rogan now so he's like all right well i'll just make her my enemy she don't want to be my friend she'll be my enemy so he starts talking shit about oprah and putting out rumors about you know oh we're beefing and then all of a sudden oprah calls him up hey why are we beefing and <laughs> invites him on and he was like Gotcha, bitch. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. And then he got on Oprah. Good for him, man. So he's he's a smart, he's a smart man. Business he's a smart man. businessman. He knows how to manipulate his environment. And you know where that came from? Trauma. It yep. came from growing up in the hood. It came from poverty. It came from drug dealing to survive. It came from all that, you know, challenges changed the way he thought and the way he adapted and the way he viewed the world. And that's why he's successful. Second book coming soon, Better Broken. That's what we're talking about. Boom. Hollow. <laughs> <laughs>